national championship but this time around Penn State is determined to bring home the bacon Jackaroot is outside with the Happy Valley tailgaters well, Brent, the only reason that pig might be happy is the fact that he's not part of the tailgate celebration here as we kick off the 1995 season for Penn State. Now, they haven't stopped celebrating out here for 17 consecutive games. They hold the Division 1A record. But the most important thing to remember is last year they finished second to Nebraska in the polls, but not according to the signs that are posted out here. They say that Penn State was number one. In fact, the Nittany Lions went so far as to fashion their own championship ring. The teammates from that team wear them proudly. And today, they set their sights on the legitimate number one for 1996. ABC Sports welcomes you to college football. A CFA matchup. From out of the Southwest Conference, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech take on the defending Big Ten champions, the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Before 96,000, Penn State will attempt to win for the 18th straight time. It is the longest win streak in college football. Texas Tech and Penn State coming up. Okay, David, get back to me. Right. The football season's arrival is not official at Penn State until a drum major arrives, and here is Darren Bennett. Later, after we conclude, it is Notre Dame against Purdue. Welcome, everybody, with Dick Vermeil. I'm Brett Musburger. Dick, you take a look at some of the names missing. Kajana Carter, Kerry Collins, Kyle Brady. Huge losses for the Nittany no Lions. No question, no question. But you know something? They're still a fine football team. With a winning average of 26 points last year, if they lose half of that production, with an offense, seven guys returning, they're still a fine football team. Plus, the defense is better. I still believe they're solid contenders for conference and national honors. I'm no mathematical genius, folks, but I love Spike Dykes in 21, if his accounting... <laughs> Well, listen, Spike Dykes, these kids are going to hustle coming up here from oh, Texas. Oh, they really play hard, Brent. You, you can really expect them to play hard both offensively and defensively. They lost the Cotton Bowl last year to USC. They beat Texas prior to that. They played Texas A&M very tough. So look for them to play tough today. Their problem, inexperience in the defensive front seven. All right, Penn State with the longest win streak in college football. Chopa will try to win for the 18th straight time. Back at Happy Valley, and Penn State begins another season under Joe Paterno. 30 years as head coach here, his 46th year as a member of the coaching staff. There is one of the great legends in the history of the game. I know that Cal Ripken was honored this week, but as Dick Vermeil says, there is the Cal Ripken of college football, Joe Paterno. Across the way, ninth season as the Red Raider coach. Spike Dykes, what a wonderful gentleman he is. What a great sense of humor. He got a couple of great anecdotes we'll pass along today. The Nittany Lions are going to be receiving Bobby Ingram and Chris Campbell are back deep with Jared Greaser having put the ball on the tee. Campbell, number 11. And there is Greaser from Amarillo, Texas. So the freshman wins the kicking assignment here. Patiently pacing it off. You can just imagine how nervous youngsters on these two teams are. Low line drive. But a good kickoff. Out through the end zone. It's going to come on the 20-yard line. So, the changing of the guards for the Nittany Lions. Their new quarterback is Wally Richardson. He takes over. And let's check in with Dick Vermeil's game plan. Dick. Well, Brent, you have to look for Wally to really try to take advantage and exploit Texas Tech's man coverage like USC did in the Cotton Bowl, but don't forget, Joe likes to run the football. He'll still run it more than he throws it. Without Kajana Carter, Mike Archie, number two, is the preferred tailback. Two outstanding fullbacks. Number 38, John Whitman. Number 22 is Brian Milne. Whitman gets the call. He's offset a little bit to the left. What 
we expect to see all day Archie stepping through the hole and here are the fellas as Zach Thomas the middle linebacker makes his first stop Abe Ingram of course returning for his senior season passing up the bucks of the NFL he and Freddie Scott they give the Nittany Lions one of the finest wide receiver combinations in the country it is now second and seven after the gain of three for Archie on a delay and he is banged by Sean Banks now there's a name to remember out of Dallas and this is an offensive line and here is where they figure to do business over on that strong side they'll line up with a tight end in most formations Keith Conlon the big tackle and the All-American guard Jeff Hardy and I will tell you something, folks, the right side or the weak side, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> They're 300 pounders. They're not very weak. Right. They haven't missed many meals, I'll tell you that. Marco Rivera and Andre Johnson now on the third and six from the 24 for the Nittany Lions. Richardson's first pass hit on the delivery and the ball to the 33 yard line into the hands of Chris Campbell and the Nittany Lions move the chains and now let's check in on your Chili's defensive alignment for Texas Tech there is Zach Thomas he's already made one stop they play an eight-man front for the most part and number 12 Marcus Coleman the rover back is a big timer I mean he'll wind up playing for somebody on a Sunday afternoon so remember that number if you're watching the Red Raiders here for the first time he is number 12 so now on a first down with the ball just short of the 34 yard line from the split back look it is Archie on the sweep and he could not get around the defender as Marco Rivera could not put Cody McGuire down. McGuire doing the job. Now we mentioned an eight-man front, and so you will see the three defensive backs whom you will see, except when they go to a nickel coverage a little bit later. So that sets the table now for both teams here. Dick Vermeil, what have we seen so far? Well, you saw already Bobby Ingram lined up in a slot position, which they did not use him in that position last year. They're going to move him around from an offensive standpoint, make it a little tougher to zero in coverage-wise. Now both fullbacks are inserted into the game as Archie has given a carry off, and they use Whitman to lead the way for Milne and Jerome Lang, the nose tackle. I think also what we're seeing, Dick, defensively is some quickness out there on the part of the Red Raiders. They're moving off their blocks pretty well so far. Oh, they are quick. They're inexperienced, but John Goodner, the defensive coordinator, told me they were going to commit eight people to stop the run, force them to throw the football, take their chances with man-to-man -man coverage, change up with some pressure blitzes, rush six and cover with five, and they know it could be a problem, but they say we have to stop what they do best first. That's the run. Now let's make it third and six for the Nittany Lions, and Richardson to throw for the second time. Blind side, flips. And Marcus Coleman, there he is, number 12, rips into Richardson. You're going to see number 12 all game long. To the top side of your screen. See, he moves around, Rover does, number 12. You don't know if he's a safety or a defensive end. Nobody came out to pick him up. Quarterbacks in a helpless position. The first string gave up three sacks all year last year. They give up one in the first series today. Daryl Kenya from Cambridge Springs, Pennsylvania. Standing at the 16-yard line, punting for the first time here today. And one of the better punt returners, and this is not a good one. It's off the right side of his foot. And the Red Raiders will let it go out of bounds, and they'll have pretty good field position. Sebi Lethridge getting ready for his first series for the Red Raiders. Every day. America's most complete source of auto parts, a national warranty program, and customer service only Napa can give. No wonder more people trust Napa to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Yeah. 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 Oh, Napa. The sun upon my skin. For those whose idea of luxury is any place they can take a load off, Chevy introduces our all-new interior. 
with the comfort of available leather, the security of an airbag, and the pleasure of power-adjustable lumbar seats. You could say these guys are sitting pretty. We just wouldn't advise it. Hey, uh, Red Dog. Why? Do you ever wonder why we're here? Where? You know, here. Why we exist. No. How come? I got better things to think about. But why are we the way we are? I mean, I'd give anything to be as big as you. True. You ain't big, but you're real quick. <laughs> quick? Yeah. I guess it all evens out then, huh? Well, that might be pushing it. Uh, Red Dog. Hey, hey, Red Dog. Yeah? Full moon tomorrow night. I'm there, buddy. Longtime rivals meet in a national showdown. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame battle the Purdue Boilermakers. It's part of the special ABC College Football doubleheader next. Zebby Lethridge took over as a freshman a year ago, and his coach Spike Dykes talked about what he brings to the Texas Tech offense. I think Zebby's a great leader. I think he's a guy that's got tremendous athletic ability. And he's a guy that makes plays. Uh, there's no doubt about it. He has got the ability to make plays. And at that position, you better have somebody who can make plays. Quick count. Brian Hansford gets the first call. We are going to see this young man all game long. He's out to the 41-yard line, and he's a real good one. Our Chili's starting lineup for the Red Raiders. Familiar name, Field Scoville, out of the Scovilles, down and down. Dick Vermeil, what about the game plan? Well, hey, look for them to run a very quick tempo offense like they're doing right now. Multiple formations try to keep the defense off balance. There's twice in a row, Dick, just what you said, the quick count. This time it was Todd Walker with Jim Nelson out of Waldorf, Maryland, making the stop. See, Penn State flops defensive personnel, meaning they take people to the wide field or to the short side of the field and line up accordingly. When you go on a real quick count and move your formations around, it sort of uh, uh, breaks down your initial defensive organization. Ben Kaufman, the ringleader of the Tech offensive line. There they go on the fast count again. And it's Debbie throwing incomplete on his first pass. Field Scoville, number 87, the intended receiver. And now they send their punter on to the field. Oh, the last time we saw the Red Raiders punting game, we had to wince and turn the other way. <laughs> that now was against what... the, the Buckeyes a few years back. Brian Cade trots out now to try it, and Bobby Ingram back deep for the Nittany Lions. He was number one in the Southwest Conference in net punt last year, Brent. He Big improvement well. over a few years ago. Ingram makes the fair catch inside the 15 at the 13-yard line, where Richardson and the Nittany Lions will put it in play. Red Raider fans down in Lubbock and down in Texas, they've got to be encouraged of what they've seen so far. But let me remind you that the big problem they've got to overcome up here is depth and size of Joe Paterno's team. Now, it is possible that the Red Raiders can stay in this for at least three quarters, but you're on your own when you get to the fourth quarter, folks, against the size of this Nittany Lion offensive line. Well, you say size. 6'7", 300, 6'3", 284, 6'2", 285, 6'2", 290, 6'5", 299. They are some pretty big horses. Archie returns, and they split the back with Whitman, and this time they'll throw on first down. Ingram made a diving attempt at the 35, second and 10. She right off, Fran Gantner, the offensive coordinator, come back, comes out and throws on first down. He sees that eight-man front. He wanted to start out running the football, and, and you, you'll notice a bigger emphasis, Brent, this year on using the fullbacks, both Whitman and Millen carrying the ball and maybe even some from the tailback position, but they wanted to start the game slowly in regard to the passing game, breaking Wally Richardson's in at a little slower tempo. All right, Joe Chura Vicious dashes in off the bench, number 83. He'll line up to the right, and Ingram sits down on second and 10. In the round, fumble, end zone, loose ball, the Red Raiders storm on it for a touchdown. Red Raiders have scored a touchdown with Sean Banks of Dallas recovering the fumble on the end around in the end zone. A very dangerous part of the field to call that play. <laughs> Joe says, I can't believe it. Joe doesn't call the offensive plays, but I'm sure he's questioning that one right now. See, they run a little counter action, hand to hand. Archie to the white seat, penetration. A defender got at the point of exchange. Oh my God. Not a good way to start, but a great way for the Red Raiders 
All right, that was Scott who was coming around with the football who fumbled it. And a great recovery for the Red Raiders now who will attempt to move up quickly. And the extra point is added by the freshman kicker. Red Raiders lead Penn State 7 0. Dick Spike Dykes calls him the best freshman he's ever recruited at Texas Tech. Monte Rigger, number 34. He's a wide defensive end on that reverse, and nobody picked him up, and he got into the point of exchange and created the turnover. Excellent way for a true freshman to start out his career at Texas Tech. And Banks falling on the ball, an outside linebacker with a lot of skill. They're going to have to run the ball up inside those very wide defensive ends. Even draw plays are really good up inside those wide defensive ends. So an early wake-up call without Kijana Carter. Penn State has carried the ball four times. That's four rushes from minus nine yards. Ingram coming out from the one-yard line. And down at the 23 with penalty flags flying all over the place. And Marcus Coleman also playing on the special teams being credited with that stop. Against the Red Raiders, a face mask penalty. This is a Big Ten officiating crew in here today. Not that it matters. A face mask is a face mask. You mentioned Marcus Coleman. He is a big play guy. Seven pass interceptions in his career. Four of them in return for touchdowns. He makes big plays. Well, let's take a look at Traeger. Where is he, Dick? See how wide he is outside defensive end. He comes right in here and gets at the point of exchange. The guard in this situation here, Rivera 54 doesn't get out there to pick him up. They didn't expect him to be that wide. Penetration, and here comes Sean Bates, 46, to end up to get that football. Penn State football. Richardson and the Nittany Lions trail it, and John Whitman pounds in there. There's their best-looking running play of the game so far. You're going to see more fullback carrying in this offense than you saw it last year. Carter's going, as you said. Uh, Brent, and they're going to take advantage of these two big 230-pound pullbacks and pound them up inside. Second down and very short after that strong run by Whitman. They come right back with him for a first down, and he roams into the secondary with Zach Thomas, the young man out of Tampa, Texas, bringing him down. Boy, there was a pancake block right there. Jeff Hardings, the right offensive guard, All-American, and also academic All-American. He came off the ball, and he put him on his back. They can't allow these smaller defensive linemen to line up one-on-one -on, -one on that guy. He comes off, nails him. There he goes. Now, just continue to watch. Boom, pancake. He put Corey Chandler down on his back. Very good effort by Thomas. He was sealed up on a block. He rolled around to make the stop. Now Richardson passing complete to Scott. Another first down for the Nittany Lions at the Texas Tech 31. You see Stung in coming back. With eight people all lined up in sight to that stop that running game, those corners are out there one-on-one. -on -one. And defensive coordinator John Goodner told me that. He knows that's a problem. He has confidence in his corner's ability. He says that's really all we play is man-to-man -man coverage. The zone coverage gives us problems. We don't play it well. Richardson rolling left. And that's complete to Campbell. And he is out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Richardson throwing on the move. If we notice an immediate difference between Kerry Collins and Richardson, it is the fact that Collins, while he could roll, Richardson sprints to the spot. He is much quicker when he moves his pocket left or right. And he throws accurately on the run. Wally is a, a little, you know, more gifted athlete type guy. Actually has a nicer looking delivery per se. Whether the end result is going to be as good, you don't know. Whitman, who started this drive, bangs to the 25. That's going to leave them with about third and two. Let's check in now with John Saunders in New York. John. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. A very quick start in your game in Florida State. Off and running as well. Remember, they had 70 points last week against Duke. Little reverse action here. E.G. Green.
Picks up 37 yards on the play, gets it inside the five, down to about the four yard line before he's pushed out. It sets up Pooh Bear Williams, who this year now has five carries and four touchdowns. Brent. John, right now it is third and three. Here comes the blitz, and they found the running back who came off the hit that time. Beautiful move by Milne. Armour being credited with the stop, but it was the second effort. Watch how he steps around the trouble right here. Yeah, they brought eight people. You called it right off the Brent, uh, the snap, Brent. Here's Andre Johnson, 68. Big, big tackle. Another pancake block. But the tackle didn't adjust to that block quite quick enough to go ahead and make that first down easily. They're going to go for it. Fourth and short at the 23. It's full house time. They put an extra blocker back in. Now the wing look off of that formation. The two fullbacks are the setbacks. And Whitman first down, Nittany Lions. The one thing you don't want to do is get the offensive line mad. These guys can come off the ball. They are as good an offensive line as there is in college football. Big offensive surge right in the middle. A small, young, inexperienced defensive lineman. Tough to take these guys on. Zach Thomas, 35, gets knocked back. Really tough on him. And look for him to continue to pound on him inside. First down, ball just inside the Red Raiders, 20-yard line, and Richardson again going to try to put it up under pressure. Jump ball, complete penalty flag at the three-yard line. Freddie Scott, the receiver, and the penalty flag was thrown. He was pushed out of bounds, but you can come back in immediately and make that catch. Maybe it's pass interference. He had pressure. They're not doing a good job of handling the eight-man pressure. Now, they didn't bring all eight people that time, but the combination of the rush got too much pressure on him, and he just threw it up high into the outside. He came back in, and that's a legal catch. So referee Tate's getting it sorted out with his crew. See, if you're pushed out of bounds in college football, you can come back in immediately and make the catch. No, I think that might be because it's a long conference that they're straightening out down here. It's not a simple interference. Let's see. Well, it is. That's exactly what the call was. Take another look at this now. Well, that's a problem with tight man-to-man -man coverage, too. You're all over people all the time, see? And he had shoved off. He came back in. He clearly caught the ball inside. here inside this area last year Brent they were absolutely outstanding they had a goal to go situation 25 times down there they scored all 25 touchdowns and that goes all the way back to losing to Michigan here on fourth and inches and they said from that day on they're going to be a great goal to go team and they went 25 for 25 last year can't do it any better Sloan is the third fullback Whitman and Milne and they put Sloan over on that left wing to help with the blocking and bring him in motion. Whitman to the end zone. So after giving up an early touchdown, the Nittany Lions march right down the field. Well, he called it. They put the big backs in there. One guy to carry it and the other two to block. Good lead block by the lead fullback to the right side of your screen. Millen, number 22. Mill, bang, right on Zach Thomas, 35. Knocks him back just enough to get the ball in the end zone. Love to see those running backs block. In fact, you can't play at Penn State if you're a running back and don't block. Brett Conway. Out of Lilburn, Georgia. Attempts to tie the score, and he does. Texas Tech 7, Penn State 7. This Saturday afternoon, Penn State got an early wake-up call this season. Fumble recovery in the end zone boosted the Red Raiders of Texas Tech into a one-touchdown lead, and the Nittany Lions drove the length of the field behind that talented offensive line and the hard running of John Whitman, who seemed to key the start of that drive. It's one of the big fullbacks. Dane Johnson set to return as Brett Conway will kick it off. Nice kick. Wow. It'll be down and 
out it comes, and down we go. Talk a little pancake with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, you guys, this is a pancake, but not the pancake that Dick Vermeil's been talking about. You know, offensive line play has always been so obscure. They don't have a lot of stats. Well, a lot of the players have started what they call the pancake stat. What that means is you knock the opponent over and you make them as flat as a pancake. So I thought what we'd do today is we'd keep a pancake stat down here. Dick, you've got the telestrator. I've got the blackboard. The score so far, Penn State two, Texas Tech nothing. With linemen like that, they're going to get a few. And whistle prior to the snap. Dead ball, encroachment. Well, we can take a breath now in the Chili's Penn State defensive lineup. A couple of veterans, including number 58, Todd Atkins, and a very familiar name in there, Aaron Collins. His brother is also in the defensive back of Jason Collins. And Kim Herring, number three, a converted tailback here. And Zebby back deep, firing incomplete at the 45-yard line. We mentioned Herring. He had the coverage that time on Hansburg. And I think we may have misspoke his first name. We had it wrong on our sheets that uh, came out this week. Byron Hanspard out of DeSoto, Texas. And uh, number four is just one of those fine young men. He was recruited by Notre Dame, Michigan, Texas A&M. Everybody Nebraska. wanted the young man to come and run for him. And he showed up in Lubbock. And here he is as a Red Raider heading to the corner. And oh, does he look dangerous with Aaron Collins bringing him down and another penalty flag has been thrown there. You notice that time, that quick tempo, get up, get their hand down and go, that the defense was lining up late, getting in position, and they got the ball snapped. Concentrate on the defense, the men in blue, see them lining up late, they're not even down in their stance, therefore there's a soft corner, running back, Hansbart gets outside. They want to do their best to keep Penn State's defense off balance. Penn State's defense only has four starters returning, so they're inexperienced as well. They figure if they can multiple formation them and, and move quickly and don't give them time to adjust and look at it prior to the snap, they have a chance to create some big plays. And, and Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator, says, we're going after him. We're going to be aggressive with the ball. Got a penalty now, Coach, and the ball's coming back down inside the 10-yard line. A couple of extra wide receivers for the Red Raiders trot onto the field. In fact, they make an exchange of three players trotting in from the sideline. Like the NFL, college football more and more has become a situation substitution game. They give Lethbridge three wide outs. They send Debach in motion. Zebby fires the screen to Hansford, slips the first tackle. Penn State bounces on it at the 13 yard, but there is a flag down. Penn State recovered the loose football, and they're celebrating like it's going to go against the Red Raiders, but there is a penalty flag. Penn State ball is the signal. Let's hold on now. Zebby is staying out there with the referee. There's a penalty against the Nittany Lions. It looked like a preliminary signal was a face mask. Penalty marker on the play. Right here in the middle of the screen, right there, you'll see the face mask, Brandon Noble, 93, getting his hand on the helmet. Good call by the official. So Texas Tech retains possession of the football. And now the penalty has to be marched off. The ball is being placed down on the 15. And the defensive unit for the Nittany Lions trots back onto the field. Malcolm McKenzie brings the Red Raider play into the huddle. It is second down and 15. That's what the situation is right now, Coach. Lethbridge is very, very mobile. He likes to run the quarterback draw. Here it comes. You called it, Dick, to the 25-yard line. 
but it's a great football play. Not many quarterbacks run it real well. In watching their game tapes uh, last year, you could see this guy. He likes to carry it, has confidence. He did it as a true freshman last year. He was the rookie of the year in the conference, and here he is getting upfield. When you bring those defensive ends wide to the outside, you got to run plays like that. Third and five. Let's see if they put the ball back in Hansford's hands or they attempt to throw for the first down with DeBach, the motion receiver. Zebby looking dropped on that far side by Darden. That was a first down if he had held on to the pass, and the Red Raiders will punt it. Todd Atkins was really working at him. Todd Atkins has lost some weight, number 58, top of your screen there. He's lost some weight playing quicker. He's being picked up by a fullback. Good use of his hands, fine football player. So Brian Cade out of Wolferth, Texas, in to punt again for the Red Raiders. And waiting to return it is Ingram. Fair catch signal at the 29 and a penalty flag. He may have waited too long he to throw up his hand. You've got to give the defender a little bit of time before you signal for the fair catch. And Spike says, of course, what's going on down there? You know, and they had a great punt coverage team last year. They only allowed 3.8 yards a punt return that's outstanding led the southwest conference no foul no foul first down all right no foul. well tonight ah if you haven't seen them you're going to want to siegfried and roy are there any better illusionists in the world than those two they're on the network tonight the magic the mystery then finish up the night with gremlins two the new batch all tonight on ABC. Now the big question about the Red Raider defense, can they stop the Nittany Lions? Richardson going long and incomplete on the fly pattern to Ingram. He had overthrown him, but Ingram had a step on McKinley. You know, John Saunders earlier showed us Florida State running an end around, and I know there was that controversy about them running up the score on Duke last week. Folks, get ready for it. It's going to happen. Teams in the Alliance want to sit one and two. Teams like Penn State, USC, out of the Big Ten, Pac-10, they want to get to one and two. So these teams getting beat up better get used to it. That's the rules of the game today. Second down now and ten for the Nittany Lions. Blitz. Archie steps away from it into the hole. Burned it beautifully. Out to midfield. See, that's another disadvantage of blitzing. If you don't get him, everybody else playing man-to-man, -man, Brent, they don't see the ball carrier as he clears the line of scrimmage. This guy is so quick. He has great feet. He's going against the quick defense as well, but they got picked up in that blitz. Now the big hole, and here he comes. He has good base. He can make people miss. See that little step right there? Good tackling, though. A 20-yard run for Mike Archie. The ball almost at midfield for the Nittany Lions. We're tied at seven in what has been a very entertaining opening quarter here. Here is Milne, and he battles his way for four yards. Speaking of John Saunders, let's check in on the Cornhuskers of Michigan State. John, what do you got? Well, Brent, Penn State, your game, as you know, they were undefeated last year, but they were number two to Nebraska, the Cornhuskers, this afternoon in Big Ten country against Michigan State. That's Tony Banks to Musin Muhammad, 16 yards. Lawrence Phillips already has 63 yards and a touchdown in the game. Brent. Okay, John, the other side of that is sometimes you may be battling for your life. Forget about running up the score. That was a rope man hung in that end zone, wasn't it? Now it is second down for the Nittany Lions. Scott's off to his right. Whitney is hit by number 74, McGuire. Cody McGuire out of Crane, Texas. See, they had eight people all up on the line of scrimmage like that, and it really is tough to run the football. Someone's going to get loose in a gap. You can see the eight people here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. Tough to run the ball. Something happened on that play. The coaches were talking to Whitman on the far side when they took him out. They send in an extra wide receiver. Actually, they've got four wide receivers in there now. Jura Vicious. Richardson has time. Fires Campbell, slips the tackle. 40-yard line and out of bounds. 
inside the 35-yard line. McKinley being worked on on that one corner by the Nittany Lions. See, these are some of the new formation additions they have in the offense. Fran Gantner told me last year they were so good, they didn't have to use a lot of formation variation. This year they decided to because they didn't, they thought they lost just a little bit. Here, one of the first times they're using this formation, they make the first down. One of the things, Dick, that we have seen is this offensive line is so talented, they can move the tight end out and send out four wide receivers. They did that on that last game, and here again, they're going without the tight end. Richardson stepping away, in zone, no interference is the call. Ingram was being covered by Robert Johnson in the end zone, no flag. They're not doing a good job of picking up the linebackers inside. That time, Zach Thomas blitz, and they did, he came right up inside, and he flushed the quarterback, did a good job. He's an aggressive young linebacker. There he is right inside here. He'll take off. They don't pick him up properly. See, he gets it. The running back tries to get him, doesn't get him properly. Tried to cut him down. Should take him right underneath the chin. Keith Allsummer, the tight end, and Chris Campbell come in from the Nittany Lion sideline. Campbell's one of the wideouts. He'll go out with Jura Vicious. Jura Vicious was so effective against Oregon out in Pasadena in last year's Rose Bowl. Richardson under pressure goes back to the corner and it is incomplete as he throws it out of bounds. Trombone player going to make a nice catch over there. <laughs> Jackaroo. Ren, you were talking about Zach Thomas. There's two great pressures from his middle linebacker position in those last two plays. You know, he says he's playing a lot better and he's a little bit quicker this year. And guess why? He spent four and a half to five hours in the weight room and I asked him why he was able to do that. He said, for the first time since I was 10 years old, my daddy didn't make me work over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Zach is right there in the middle, number 35. He'll be around the football a lot. Really talented against the run. Third down, Richardson under pressure, incomplete. Ingram was open, and Richardson couldn't shorten up the throw that time. So good defensive pressure by the Red Raiders. And what the pressure has done, I think, is sort of, it, it shakes up the quarterback, Wally Richards, in this situation. I think he, he's anticipating pressure now and throwing off rhythm, throwing quickly when he doesn't have to throw quickly. So Kena on the field to punt again. He'll try to bury the Red Raiders down inside the 15-yard line if he can. He'll just try to pooch this one. Nice job. And a good-looking punt. Fair catch at the 14-yard line, so he did his job. Let me remind you that on Monday night, here on the network, Jeff Fahey stars in a brand new episode of The Marshall. And then it's Monday Night Football, the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. Packers beat up on them twice last year. Brett Favre will try to do it again. Bitter disappointment for the Packers last week against the St. Louis Rams. Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And now tied at seven. Lethbridge and the Red Raiders go back to work. Zebby with a slick move, moves the pocket. Scoville battling to hold on. It was good catch there at the 32-yard line. You know, we mentioned Field Scoville, and I've got to say something. I've known his family for a long time. His granddaddy and his father, both presidents of the Cotton Bowl down in Dallas. His daddy, who was here, of course, was a quarterback down at Texas Tech. And Field has turned out to be one of those very consistent receivers and just a wonderful family. I'm sure that Grandpa's watching on. First and 10. And that is Nelson making the stop. You know, I saw Byron Hansberg yesterday at the hotel, and I asked him about playing here and what he anticipated. He said, Coach, in watching these tapes and watching Penn State's play, he says, they're awfully good. And he says, boy, when they get to the ball carrier, they put some hurt on you. So now second and 10.
Partridge may have made a half yard. They wanted to run an option play, and as you said, he started to drop the quarterback center exchange right there, but he got it down there between his knees, got up with it, and tried to go ahead with the play. Couldn't do it. And at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, the Nittany Lions seem to be adjusting to the quick count. Game slowed up just a little bit. Timeout has been called by Texas Tech. Lethbridge coming to the sideline. And we get a chance to check in on some shows coming up on ABC. Zebby Lethbridge out of Lubbock, Texas. He was an all-around athlete, and he has come to Happy Valley. See what he can do against the team with the longest win streak in college football. Penn State with 17 straight W's. The last team to beat Penn State was Ohio State. A couple years back in their initial season in the Big Ten, then Penn State recovered, came back, went to the Citrus Bowl, beat Tennessee. Now Zebby, under pressure, throws as he's going down. Out of bounds and incomplete. Terry Killens was draped all over him. Tough for a quarterback to throw under that kind of pressure. Penn State doing the same thing. Tech quarterback as Tech was doing. Two Penn State quarterback. No way to throw the ball accurately in that situation. Actually, he deserves credit for not taking a big loss awesome. for just getting the ball off of there. And now, Brad Cade into punt again. This one's a low That's return a return ball from the 35-yard line. Ingram. And he is down at the 46-yard line, and we send you quickly to New York and John Saunders. John? Brent, start the cry. Beware who bear. Who bear Williams, five yards on this touchdown run. He's a 266-pound fullback. Six carries, 19 yards this year. Five of them, though, for touchdowns. Brent? Who bear? That's a good one. I like that one, John. So, already the Seminoles strike for a couple of touchdowns in Death Valley down there in South Carolina. Boy, a few years back, it was Clemson that pushed Charlie Ward and the Seminoles right to the brink on a Saturday night game, then the shotgun, and things have never been the same since Charlie Ward in that formation. Here there's a penalty flag on first down thrown by the line judge here on Archie Carey. Scores from around the country rolling in, and. Uh, Dick, I guess the uh, Northwestern uh, folks are enjoying their week off, huh? <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice to lord it over to Fighting Irish yeah. fans for at least one more week. <laughs> Speaking of them, how do you think they'll make out against uh, Purdue today? A little think, bit later on ABC. I think it'll be an even football game. Though I'd rather play Notre Dame coming off a win than coming off a loss, believe me. Yeah. Lou will have them ready. But you know, Purdue had to play pretty well, don't you think, at Morgantown to yeah. come back down there? Hey, we're tough up there. You know, we've done ball games up there. Yeah. And I played golf in the Big Ten tournament with Jerry Coletto, and he told me they were going to be a better football team. It's the first year he felt competitive every weekend. Yeah, he said, I don't feel any sympathy for Notre Dame. Yeah. I don't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's been there. So that'll be coming up next. After the five-yard penalty, first and 15, Richards is complete this time into the middle, and that is Campbell at the 49-yard line, and Robert Johnson is there defensively. Dick, the passing attack, and I don't think this should surprise anyone. I mean, I don't think anybody can be shocked that the passing game is not as slick as it was a year ago with Kerry Collins and all that experience. You had Kyle Brady at tight end. You had Kajana as the running threat in that backfield. It's going to take a little time. It will take time, and especially if Wally Richardson threw the ball 33 times the whole time last year. So it's going to take him a game or two. Right now, like that one, he threw low. He throws it up in the numbers. It's a big play. Young man out of South Carolina. Hands it off to Milne, one of the two fullbacks. One of the things, especially Red Raider fans will notice, may not have been able to watch Penn State much. These two fullbacks, 22 and 38, they're old-fashioned, big-time running backs. And as a result of their efforts, the Nittany Lions were able to come back and tie the Red Raiders. We're at the end of one, seven, seven. He has to be very pleased with this young defense. Remember, only four returning starters. They are quicker, as he said. He thinks they're going to be a much better defensive football team than they were last year. They're proving it now. Ingram is back. He's got it at the 
37. The ball! The Raiders have got it! No still loose, still loose! Now the Red Raiders may have recovered it at the 20. That's the signal. You should never try to scoop it up. You should fall on it and draw it to your belly. More often than not, when you try to move, bend over and scoop the ball up, you're just gonna push it on downfield. Fortunately for the Texas Raiders, they ended up being the guys that pushed it down and ended up recovering it. Now, Wallace. You gotta get that ball tucked away. See, that's you know who did it? That was Marcus, Marcus Coleman who charged it loose. A, A big, big timer. Maker. And Wallace, Alan Wallace, will come up and recover the ball. First down now for the Red Raiders at the Nittany Lion 20 yard line. There's a fake to Hansford. Lethbridge rolling right. Fires in zone. Snowball touchdown. Red Raiders lead it. Excellent call. Good changeup. Bootleg action. Quarterback with a lot of mobility. Wide receiver coming from the left side of the field. Field Scoble crosses the formation. In the zone. In the zone. Not man to man. He finds him. Lays it in there. Field Scoble touchdown. Waggle action. Fake left, comes strong to the right. Right receiver, middle of your screen, crossing. Good pressure, not enough. Good athlete, gets it there. Whoo, he almost batted it down. Nice, nice call by Dick Winder, offensive coordinator. Now Greaser for the extra point. And what the Red Raiders have done here is convert two Penn State touchdowns into 14 points. One they recover in the end zone. On the second, it takes them only one play. The Red Raiders are here to stay today, folks. Specialists, because they're not used to running the ball in intense areas, and they aren't normally drilled as much by a coach in terms of running skills and protecting the ball. They're drilled on catching it and putting it away, but not protecting it in the intense areas. Uh, areas, and that's what he does not do here. So he gets it out away from his body. Too much space there in the intense area between the ball and his body, and it's stripped right out of there. You know, Penn State fumbled the ball, lost four times last year in 11 games. Four times. They've fumbled three times here today. And Joe trying to pick up his senior receiver. Jack Aroot, big crowd here today, but very quiet right now. Well, Brent, indeed it is, and we'll watch this play because the crowd will come into it, but just for a couple of seconds. And as the team gets to the line, you can hear them, but I've been to high school games that don't have as, if they're louder than this, and I think they've really taken the crowd right out of the game. Now Lethridge in trouble, makes the most out of it. Oh, Turned it into a two-yard gain and out of bounds. Aaron Collins, outside linebacker, blitz came inside cleanly, but the mobility of Lethridge, he saw him coming, sidestepped him and breaks outside and picks up a few yards. From a minus play to a positive play. Good quarterback alertness. 96, Tau. Now DeBuck into this alignment along with Hanspard. They have used him as a wide receiver. They brought him in motion as they do this time. And the late pitch to Hansford trying to get him some running room to the 32-yard line, and it'll be third down. Late pitch. Oh, is that a dangerous pitch? But that's that sort of a trap option up inside. Very dangerous. But there was good penetration coming in there. He got right in the quarterback's face. Good hand-eye reaction by the quarterback, Lethridge. He flips it out there anyway. Gets under Killen's 92. He flips it out there accurately. That's dangerous, but it was effective. Well, what do you think? Third and two here, Dick. Two downs to make the first down. They lead it by seven. Lethridge looks at the defense. In trouble when he stepped to the outside. Complete. Hits his fullback inside the 20 yard line. That was Rod Hobbs out of Denver. Kim Herring, the defender. Rod Hobbs was that big fullback. They offset him that time. Really wasn't a key guy in the pattern. Broken pattern, quarterback scrambling. He goes, finds the open zone. They pass it to him. They get it to him. They're staying within their thoughts game plan wise to mix it up, mix the formation, stay with the quick counts. So far, they haven't changed. I still think they're going to try to get Lethridge outside on that corner a little bit more, away from that inside rush. 
a three touchdown underdog. The Red Raiders with a seven point lead and mounting another assault. Hansford picks his daylight, slams into the right side across the 15 yard line and he's a good looking running back. Didn't he demonstrate that right there? He comes up behind, there's not a big hole. He drops his tail, center gravity goes down. He keeps a good base and he just breaks it to the outside and scoots for a few yards. Good running back. No wonder he ran for 760 yards last year. You know the other thing, he's, a, he's an ordained Pentecostal minister. Very serious young man. Killens is uh, shaken up on the play. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because he tells the story himself yeah. that he was being recruited by all of these big, big schools. And uh, he was in the shower one morning and he says the Lord told him to go to Texas Tech. <laughs> And Spike, he was kidding me. He said, I hope that young man never gets in the barrel, goes over Niagara Falls. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Spike, Spike better get on that same communication wave and I take know. from door to door. <laughs> I know. You got it. That's not a bad recruiter, ladies and gentlemen. Right. That's pretty good. I've heard that story before. Not, not in this situation, but another That's situation. Yeah. Well, he's supposed to be an outstanding young man. And uh, obviously, he's a good football player. And he gets the call again behind the short side of the field, and he just determined, crosses the 10-yard line before he's out of bounds. True freshman Anthony Cleary, defensive end that time, did an awfully nice job of standing up the offensive tackle, forcing the play to bounce outside and allow the rest of the defense there to get to make the play. He is a true freshman playing in his first college football game. Here he is, freeze it right there, freeze it right there. Here he is, working inside out, makes the ball come outside. Nice job, Anthony Cleary. Hansford picked his way for the first down. It'll be first and goal. Dick, if they ever fake it and they make it bootleg, Lethbridge the other way, he's going to be all alone. Now he rolls behind him and he'll throw incomplete in the end zone. The intended receiver was McKenzie. You know, when you're rolling to your left and throwing to your left like that, at that angle, you got to be careful that you don't overthrow it because you have body momentum pushing the ball in the direction, too. And you're, you have a tendency as a quarterback to throw it wide to the outside and a little too hard. Scoville, who caught their touchdown pass to put the Red Raiders ahead, brings the play onto the field. Hobbs the fullback. Hansford's the tailback. Darden is out to the left. And here's Hansford, a yard and perhaps not even that. And that was Cleary again. A true freshman making that kind of play. Good football player. He's got a great career here. Played in the Big 33 game last year. Got injured in the game and missed part of training camp. Missed seven, eight days after going off arthroscopic knee surgery. And here he is starting and playing real well. Not starting lineup, but starting to play real well here in his first game. Well, one thing the Red Raiders don't want to do here is give up the field goal with anything foolish. It's now third down, huge underdog, leading it by seven. They're having a hard time getting lined up properly. In trouble, throws it, Hansburg makes a move, touchdown, Red Raiders! See what happened, Brent, they didn't get lined up properly. Man to man, they turned the guy loose. Well, you can see Hansford kneeling in the end zone and Jackaroo. Brent, a week ago, that would have been a penalty. And Byron Hansford had said that if he scored a victory, he didn't care about the NCAA. He was going to pray. But remember the lawsuit that was made by Liberty University to try and make praying individual praying back into the playbook? The NCAA went along with it. And now Hansford can do that without a yellow penalty flag. And now, Jack, the Red Raiders with a chance to make it 21-7. And he misses an extra point. Oh, how that can come back to haunt you. Wow. Oh, baby. It's a small thing right now, but it can become a huge albatross by the fourth quarter. But the Red Raiders have converted three Penn State turnovers into touchdowns. This tag, John Saunders is coming up. Dick, I can't find Collins or Kajana or anybody like that over no. the sideline. R right now, they're, they they are really shook up, I think. They don't, they've don't. they lost a little edge offensively, and I think they they certainly have enough time to regroup like they've done in the past, but it isn't going to be easy. Great kick. Johnson will down it and come out on the 20-yard line. Jack Arute, what about the mood of these two teams? 
regret going into the locker room, it was obvious that for Penn State and Joe Paterno, there was a sense of urgency. In fact, uncharacteristically, Joe Paterno declined to be interviewed. He said he needed to get to the locker room and remind these players that they've got to get that rhythm. They seem to be really confused by the quick tempo of play on offense by the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Conversely, Coach Spike Dykes went into the locker room and told his players, remember, they play the game for 60 minutes. He said, we've had a good first half before, and we've fallen apart in the second half. Don't do it this time. So Zebby Lethridge faking Hansford. First down, down the middle, incomplete. Deflected away from Tony Darden. Brian Miller there with coverage. And right away, it's second and 10. Obviously, Spike Dykes doesn't plan to try to sit on his lead. He comes out and goes deep on the first play. Actually, he wanted to get the ball down the hole to his big tight end, Feeberger, and he couldn't get it to him, so he threw it to the outside wide receiver. Defensively for the Nittany Lions, Terry Killens, Brandon Noble, chomping at the pit down there, that defensive line. Dillons now switches over as a stand-up on the defensive left side. Hansford coming the other way to the 21-yard line, and Todd Atkins. You'd be better off spending your day one in a ring, running away from Todd Atkins. He was a very, very active defensive lineman. Not a great big guy, but very active and quick. Number five, Brad Scioli out of Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. He's also down there in that defensive line. And right away, the Nittany Lions put the Red Raiders in third and long. Texas Tech 20, Penn State 7. Four wide receivers. A bridge can't find one open. And he's going down on the seven yard line with Brandon Noble on him. And it's three and out after a huge loss. Give credit uh, to Todd Atkins on that as well, Brent. He got the pressure on him. Noble was up inside, made him bounce to the outside. Killers 92 going up inside. Pressure now to the outside on Noble. Then here comes Atkins, forces him right back in to his teammate, Brandon Noble. And Bobby Ingram, who gave it up twice in the first half, has been sent back to see if he can make him in for those two mistakes. The punt is boom. Ingram at the 44-yard line. Down at the 49-yard line for Richardson and the Nittany Lions. And this crowd is suddenly alive. Well, they were out of sync on the run-pass ratio of the first half. Running and passing almost equally. They didn't get anything out of the running game. Now, you can fault the offense if you want to, but you're better off giving credit to John Goodner and the defensive staff and those fine defensive players out there just scrambling, biting, and scratching to stop a big physical offensive team. All summer, the tight end to the left side. Archie back in at tailback. Now splits to the left, and they move the strength of the formation to the right. They'll run in that direction. Archie on a cutback. Three yards before he's brought down by Dane Johnson. They are already a switching game plan. Now they're flopping the defense, the tight end, rather the offensive tight end, line him up one side, get the defense lined up that way, then shift him across, and he ends up then being on the smaller defensive lineman, and that's an advantage to the offense. Now Ingram and Scott hit for the sideline, and Jura Vicious on the field with Chris Campbell. Summers to the right. Conlon and Hardings are the offensive linemen behind the strength of the formation. Blitz. Archie. Ambush at the 49 by Cody McGuire. The Red Raiders were there defensively. It's third and long for the Nittany Lions. They're doing a real good job with their defensive calls. Actually, they blitz right into the running lane that time. Just too many guys to block. You're not going to run efficiently that way. Zach Thomas, number 35. Passes the defensive call along to the Red Raiders. They get ready now on third and nine. Archie the tailback. Richardson with time. Ingram's all alone. First down against the zone. Ingram crashes inside the 30-yard line, and Robert Johnson cleans it up. See, the one thing he had that time is a lot of time to allow the pattern to develop. He took the play action. People were backing out of there. He had great protection initially. They backed out in, like you said, the zone defense. They gave him time. They back out of there. They play him short, turn him loose in there. All kinds of time. He turns into the zone. 
There it is, there's all kinds of room to go ahead and advance the football. Campbell in motion. All Summers to the right. They'll run behind the right side with Archie. Archie blasts past the 25 to the 23 yard line. And they're on that strong side of the line. We can't say enough about a guard who wears number 50, Jeff Hardings, and a tackle number 53, Keith Conlon. And his partner from the other side of the line of scrimmage, Marco Rivera, pulled across and got the good kickout block on that, Brent. So you had a lot of beef at the point of attack. They bring those two again to the right side of the formation. Four wide receivers. Ingram. He'll get it on the end of the round, and Ingram is down at the 20-yard line, short of the first down. This will be third and short. You would expect the Nittany Lions to load up with their fullbacks now. Harding's down there working a combination block with his offensive tackle, Keith Conlon. Number 53, number 60 in the middle of the screen. Cross block, kick down, kick out right there, trying to turn him out so they can run up inside an academic All-American as well as a football All-American. Now Milne in from the sideline. It's third and two. He'll be set alongside of Archie. Stevenson, the extra tight end. And a timeout is called. He had asked for timeout prior to the movement down there, and there was a whistle. So Richardson didn't like what he saw, and Penn State down to two timeouts, trailing at 20 to seven. So the college football season in full swing again. And here in Happy Valley, Texas Tech, a three touchdown underdog, leading Penn State 20 to seven. But the Nittany Lions are on the move. This is a big play for them. Third and two after their timeout. Whitman and Milne, the two fullbacks, have checked in and Archie's out. That's Scott in motion. And Milne is slammed. He has stood up by the Red Raiders as Sean Banks, who recovered a fumble for a touchdown, is the first to hit him. Excellent job of scraping off into the hole, moving parallel, seeing the hole, and then going right up inside and filling it. Normally on a play like that, you have a guard pulling around to try to pick him up. They didn't have him. You'll see right here to the right side of your screen. He's filling it out there. Now moves right up inside out that plate. Nice job by everybody in tech, but especially Sean Banks. All right, six. Conway in now to attempt the field goal for the Nittany Lions. This ball is going to be put down at the 27-yard line. 37-yard field goal attempt for Conway. No good. So the Red Raiders hold on. The first drive of the second half. I can hear some noise down there in Lubbock. Those <laughs> folks in the red sweaters are starting to love it. And on top of that, the Nittany Lions waste one of their three timeouts. Joe Paul's not happy. Standing athlete, this guy. He's demonstrated that day, today in his mobility in the quarterback draws and the scramble actions and has thrown the ball pretty well. With the cramping, Dick, would you keep him from running? Would you, you have him hand it off? You would hope to be able to keep him from running, but a lot of his running is in the scramble situation. Hansford looking to get the corner. Up, up, up. First and goal on the Hansford fumble. Terry Killings gives him a chance after Jason Collins strips the football. They stretch the play inside out. Inside handoff is supposed to and designed to get outside. He carried the ball in his left hand away from his body loose. And that's Collins right there. Jason Collins, as you said, went knocking it out of there. And Killens, how many times have we called his name? He's made some plays today. So the full house look with Sloan, Whitman, and Milne into the backfield with Richardson. 253-pound fullback, 230-pound fullback. They got some horses there. Sloan on the left side of the formation. They run to the other side. Touchdown, Penn State on the Whitman run. Good 
that simple old off tackle play. Lead with your running back to the right side here. You don't need it to the left side of your screen. It gets a nice kick out back. They pick up the linebackers inside. Thomas takes him on, 35 takes him on, but he's taken on a 235 pounder and he can't stop him. Bang, kick out, up inside, turns back, gets pad to pad. A little too much meat there. Conway. And the Lions are back to within six. And remember, Texas Tech missed its third extra point. And it's sitting on 20 to 14. Starting to roar. You can hear the sound from the Nittany Mountain. The Lions are on the prowl. thing you don't want to do up here is allow these fans to get back in the football game. There's more than a fan. I hear him again. The last time, Conway blew it into the end zone. 416 left in the third. Johnson, the center field return man for the Red Raiders. You know, turnovers kill you anytime, but when you turn it over down in that territory and you're playing on a five yard field, that's impossible. So you come out on the 20 yard line, first and 10. And now Texas Tech needs something good to happen. You saw on your screen, that was Coach Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator, talking to him before they take the field. Here he is right there, right center of your screen, talking to Lethbridge, number eight, giving him the instructions. Does an excellent job of coaching this offense. Believe me, they don't have a lot of people out there that just whip you physically. They do a lot of finesse things, very intelligent coaching. Darden and Stovall, the wide receivers to Lethbridge's left. Darden in motion. They fake to Hansford. Let's rage. Got a block. No good. Incomplete. Scovel juggling the ball as he goes out of bounds. Second down and ten. McKenzie dashes in to Lethbridge with the play. Nice to hear Lion, Lions growling in the back of the They are really stuck at this place now. Hansford down at the 20-yard line. Defense led by Filardi out of Huntington, New York. Good football player. You know, Filardi's really a story. He walked on here without a scholarship, Brent. Saw his parents last night, and they're excited about him playing today. Look at the winning the winning, idle and losing. You know, he had the ball. That is, Hansbart had the ball way out loose from his body that time again, Brent. Using it as a, a tool to balance him as he runs. He's got to keep it in there. This is third down. The Nittany Lions are trying to force three and out now and turn this game completely back in their favor. Looks like they're going zone coverage, which they are. Screen pass. Ansford slipping, won't get it. Three and out. Yeah. Red Raiders will punt. You know, there's been a lot of slipping on the part of Texas Tech. I wonder if they play more on Exeter at home and, and not so much on the regular draft. The Farmers, have, they woke up in the stadium. Brad Cade. Bobby Ingram. They set a return. 
Hard, hard to return that one. Into that breeze, fair catch at the 46-yard line. Nittany Lions, 54 yards and an extra point away from taking the lead. Now the other thing, if you give the ball to Mike Archie, he's the kind of back, you don't have to block everybody for him. He can make somebody miss and make the big run as he demonstrated in that last, last drive. They've got to give him the ball back there so they can continue this winning streak. If they don't, the Red Raiders are going home victors. Archie's 32-yard run set up that scoring drive. Milne and Archie are in the backfield. Scott and Ingram are the wide receivers. Hey! On a short drop, quick drop, Ingram grabs it. Fumble! He's down. He's down. And they mark it down right there. First down off the 11-yard gain. See, they've got to do more of that kind of stuff. Just even if they rush everybody in that situation, you get rid of the ball so quickly, you seal off the inside gaps. They can't get into your face. Bang, and you hit him. See, he's going to throw the quick slant here, but the quarterback is just going to take a reverse pivot, turn around, and let the ball go quickly. See, wham, bam, let it go right now. Hard to get to him on that. Sure, vicious. Campbell, Scott, check in. They'll go with an extra wide receiver for Richardson. The ball is at the Red Raider, 42-yard line. On the end around is Ingram again. Slip the tackle, battles his way to the 32-yard line. And finally, McKinley brings him down. You know, that's a gutsy call. I would be afraid to call that kind of play with the wide outside pressure that they're getting. That's a slow hitting play. But the offensive line did a real good job. The defender constricted it, and he just bounced outside with his quickness and, and, and moved the ball. Sometimes the player makes the call look good. Now they're continuing to change their look with their personnel. This time, Penn State will go with the tight end, and Alzheimer checks back in. He comes over here to the right of Conlon and Hardings on the right side. They head behind that, and it was Archie who cut up inside the 30-yard line for the first down. So they're going to be real tough this year to get out on anything from third and three on in when they load up the tight end to the right of Cronin and Hardings. You know, and even at that, Zach Thomas, 35, the inside linebacker, really attacked it. He just attacks that thing. Here he is right here. He's going to attack and fill it, but he can't get there quite quick enough. Trades off, gets in there. Millen meets him man to man, turns it back inside. That's a real collision by two good football players. First and 10 for the Nittany Lions, down by six. Another fake this time. Richardson now sideline. Ingram's got it out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Now Ingram starting to do his thing after giving it up twice in the first half. Coming back here now to play like an All-American. You can see man for man here up tight. What they do, they run a short, quick screen action to hold the corner up here, and that allows him room to get to the corner pattern behind it off good action here. See, they fake the quick screen. Now he goes back to the corner. There it is. Good play, good action. First down. Tight end is to the left. Campbell steps in that direction. They blitz. They blitz. The play was read beautifully by Banks. Boy, is he quick. Wow. He gets there real fast, Brent. He runs a 4 6 40. And that time he looked like he ran a 4 2. He almost got to the running back yeah. before Richardson could reach out to him. And on the five yard loss, this is going to leave him with a second and 15, and it's going to make it tough sledding down here now. They ran that draw play that they ran so efficiently last year. It was a big play for him all year. That time it got stuffed. And now on second down, the quarter comes to an end. So the Red Raiders will take their lead into the third quarter. But the question we ask at the top of the broadcast, can Spike Dykes and the Red Raiders hold up? We'll find out after this message and a word from our ABC station. Raiders lead at 2014. We get ready for the final 15 minutes. What you football fans have been talking and reading about for weeks now has come to pass as it's been confirmed Deion Sanders 
has signed his football contract with Dallas. Meanwhile, this Monday night, we'll have the Green Bay Packers, Chicago Bears. Rashawn Salam was late coming to camp, but now he's starting to come on a little bit for the Bears. You're going to want to take a peek at him. 9 o'clock Eastern time. Now, trailing it by 6. Richardson to the line. Second and 15 for the Nittany Lions. They're back at the 16-yard line. Looks like here they come. Archie on the wings, a good receiver, but they will not let him get it off. As Robert Johnson out of Lubbock came strong off the wing. Yeah, you know, that they get that eight guys up there. He's in a position to rush. Then you would think that Wally would take a look at him because he's coming in his face to the top of your screen on the left-hand side. But Wally's looking left all the way. Richardson right there and doesn't see him coming. And obviously the pass protection is not built to handle that guy out there. And if he's not going to handle him with a blocker, then they've got a sight adjustment and throw it quickly. Now they have made it third and 22 with those two outstanding defensive plays. Remember this series began at the Red Raider 11 yard line. Now on third down, Scott is slotted. Richardson rolls to his direction. Throws Ingram. They mark it on the three yard line. Bobby Ingram making a spectacular grab as he goes out of bounds at the three, but short of the first down. Well, we saw Bobby make some spectacular catches last year. He takes him inside to the post, but now he goes back outside against the zone. He gets there. Now the ball is thrown right where it has to be, away and over the defender's head. He gets that left leg down. He got it down. Oh, baby. No nice question, he gets the ball. Dude, that's a big, big play. That was close, but now remember, and a timeout is going to be called by Penn State, but this is a very critical moment. This is a fourth down. They're down by six points. Kick the now field goal. 14 minutes to go. A field goal moves you back to within three rather than gamble on getting a touchdown here. You know, you're moving the ball now. You'd like to believe you're going to get back down there. You're down in this area. You've got to come out with points. A lot of time to play. They're discussing it over there on the sideline. I want to take another look at this catch by Ingram. I don't want to second guess it until I get a different look at it. From high above, I wasn't so sure he got a foot down. The official with a much better look than me. And here is Ingram. Oh, great grab. Right. Yeah, that left leg, it got down. Did an excellent job. That's, that's real good coaching by Kenny Jackson, the wide receiver coach, teaching those kids that where they are in the field and they can get those feet down even when they're extended in the air like that. Ladies good job, Kenny. This is what a receiver has to do is be able to get his feet down, which is exactly what he did here in this situation. Freeze it right there, see? Right there. There it is. So now, with 14-10 to go, and Penn State trailing it by six on fourth down and a very long yard, they elect to go for the touchdown in the lead. Pass up the field goal from the right hash mark, and they're going to show for it. They got it to the tight end, Keith Olsummer, and this game is tied pending the outcome of the extra point. Joe Paterno doesn't make the calls offensively, but only the head coach can make the decision on that one. On fourth down there, it's the head coach's decision. It ends up being a good one on his part. They run the play action pass, fake it strong inside, coverage is blown, they turn him loose inside, and you see that happen in the NFL as well. Now, Conway's extra point would give the Nittany Lions their first lead of the game. 21 to 20, Texas Tech missed an extra point after its third touchdown. That's the difference right now. The Nittany Lions are up, but only by one point. Leaders of Texas Tech trailing it by a point. Hanspard is back in as the running back. He has rushed for 77 yards, but he's been rather quiet and turned it over in the second half. And still quiet as number six, Aaron Collins, is all over him.
Well, that same thing coming up underneath the, the defensive end. He comes back up underneath in the stunt, makes the play nicely. As we said earlier, the youngest of five brothers to play here. Had a chance to visit with him the other day. Brent, he's one of those kids that smiles easily. As soon as you start talking to him, he can't help himself but grin. As soon as he got some, gets on the field, puts that helmet on, that grin turns into a sneer and he gets after you. Second and 13 after the three yard loss. The Nittany Lion defense has arisen here in the second half. They've been all over the Red Raiders. Lethbridge slips away this time. High and incomplete because Brad Sayle was given chase. Brad has played a very, very good go ball game. That's the first time he's played defensive tackle on the inside. And he was a fine high school player playing in the Big 33 game. And, you know, so he had the talent all along. But playing inside for the first time is tough. Was he a quarterback once upon a time? Quarterback in high school, no question. You know, he's a big guy at Upper Marion High School. Threw 57% of his passes. Now he's chasing the guy. Different perspective. I'd get a signed letter from Joe Paterno <laughs> if I was a quarterback. He came up here. <laughs> now it's third down. Lethridge, receiver covered, now under pressure. Got an open man's Mitchell. Far side, Mitchell out of bounds at the 40-yard line of the Nittany Lions. And the Red Raiders on the move, and that was Lethridge. He looked off his primary and picked up a secondary target. A great job, Brent. He, he set in there with tremendous poise. He had bodies all around him. Within three feet, every way around him, you're going to notice there's going to be somebody in his face to his right. Here it comes. There's somebody in his face now to his left. He sees him there. He sits there with great poise and picks up the third receiver in the pattern. He has grown within this ballgame. Meanwhile, there's a freshman kicker down there for the Red Raiders. Might be getting a little nervous right now. Here's Hansberg, left side. Hansberg found the corner. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what happened on that, Brent. Steve Jimmy Nelson, 44, the linebacker, tried to go underneath and make the play inside. If you go underneath the outside contain as a linebacker, you got to make the play. Otherwise, you're wrong. Dick, that's one of the few times that Hansford's got his pads turned upfield on this defense. They've that's right. him out beautifully. Yep. But boy, once he turns, he's got a little zip, doesn't he? He does. He flashes. That's why everybody in the country wanted him out of high school. First down inside the 30-yard line. Red Raiders on the move. Lutheridge keeps it. Should have pitched it. Three yards before he was down that time with Todd Atkins hanging on. See, Todd Atkins took the quarterback. He should have pitched the football. They had him outnumbered there. They had a very good play going. A real good play. Todd did what he was supposed to do, took the quarterback. He didn't pitch it. You'll see what I'm talking about as the quarterback comes down the line of scrimmage. He comes down the line of scrimmage. Todd jumps out and hits him, but he doesn't pitch the ball to the tailback. Comes down. Just flip it out there. He didn't do it. Dick, I believe their injured kicker is also starting to loosen up over here. A timeout has been called by Lethridge, but I believe I have seen Rodgers down there as well as Greaser. Yes, indeed. Now, he came in and was injured, and they're moving down here inside of eight minutes. They have advanced to the 27-yard line. Remember, the difference in this ball game is a missed extra point. Right, well, you know, Rodgers last year kicked seven, five for seven, so he has some kicking experience. It would be nice to be able to put a guy in a pressure situation that's been there before. John Saunders, can Deion Sanders shut down Jerry Rice in November? Let's begin the hype, big fella. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. As you just mentioned, it is now official, as speculated for days. Deion Sanders has signed with the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones made the announcement just a short time ago. About 12.30 last night had completed all of the uh, physical examinations that uh, would be required uh, of a transaction of this magnitude. <laughs> and uh, Deion Sanders signed the contract and he's now a Dallas Cowboy. Brent, not a bad deal either. Five years, about $30 million and a $12 million signing bonus. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, Poor David. guy. Oh, well, and, congratulations. Emmett Smith will be knocking on the door Monday. That's a lot of cash for the federal government. Now Lethridge on his sprint here to the right. 
throws incomplete and out of bounds. The receiver, Darden, was extremely well covered. Miller was right there. Number 34 is a fine cover man. Excellent protection, and that was a design sprint out. Actually, he comes back. They call it a dash principle, where you, you goes back there, you sit there, and then you come to the outs. Oh, my gosh. Who's that? Offensive coordinator? That was Jack Aroot. That's who that was. The third and eighth play for the Red Raiders. It doesn't get any bigger than this for the Red Raiders. Let me tell you. Hester trips at the 23-yard line. Fourth down. And here comes the field goal unit. And it's going to be Rodgers. He will attempt this field goal. That was a very good call. Penn State had cover off man-to-man -man underneath and backed them up with two free safeties. That's tough to throw against. So they come with that quick play up inside. If that thing pops, he's got a good one. He trips up, they got to kick the field goal. Now Field Scoville, number 87 is the holder here. 42-yarder, he was five for five last year from this distance. Did Brad not miss one. Spinks will snap it to Scoville. On its way, Kirby got it. The Red Raiders back into the lead. Look at old Coach Spike Dykes. He acts like, hey, it's just, just going just to schedule, just how we, how we had a program. Rodgers, injury and all, kicks the field goal that puts the Red Raiders up by two. Texas Tech, a three touchdown underdog on the strength of Rogers field goal, leads Penn State by two points with six and a half minutes to go. Greaser trots back onto the field to kick it off for the Red Raiders now. As Scott and Campbell are back deep, and well, Greaser hammers one. Woo! It's coming out of the 20 yard line. Jack Aroot, what's up with the kickers from Lubbock? Well, Brett, Tony Rogers had approximately 29 minutes to think about that kick. You see, during halftime, Coach Spike Dykes gathered both of his kickers around and said, Jared Greaser, you're not really getting the job done in terms of field goals. He turned to Tony Rogers and he said, if we need a field goal, it's your call in the second half. Rogers was hoping that maybe he would get called in to make that one, despite the problems with his leg in the past. He said, hey, I was ready. And Jack, he's out of Plano, Texas, where he was an outstanding high school soccer player. In fact, he was the most valuable soccer player in the state of Texas when he was a senior. And his kick now has boosted the Red Raiders back into the lead. So it's Penn State's turn behind that offensive line. And the defense all over Archie that time. Zach Thomas was in there, along with Lang, jamming up the middle. Yeah, I know it. And so is Sean Banks there, too. Those two linebackers have really, really played well. You know, when you prepare for a game, you read all about the kids, you get a feel for them. And everything said about Banks and everything said about Zach Thomas is true. These kids can play. Better get a handle on Ingram. He's torched from here in the second half. Richardson's going to hit him on that middle look. And Ingram dances short of the first down, keeps going and gets it. Oh, Bobby Ingram with a great run after the catch. That was a double screen fake. He, he comes back to the underneath screen. See Bobby, number 10 to the outside. They clean it out outside. He faked to the right. He throws it over the middle. He has blockers downfield. Now it's just, it ain't running ability. But yet, he's got the darn football outside away from his body. Woo! Coach Joe's going to hit him with a baseball bat. Johnson is right there. He's already coughed it up twice in the first half. Woo! The invisible man for Penn State today has been Freddie Scott, number 31. Richardson's been unable to exploit his great ability. And you would think at some point they would certainly try to get him in. And uh, Johnson is shaken up for the Red Raiders. At least I believe that is Johnson, who is yes, kneeling is. down. Yes, Dane he'll Johnson. have to come out at least for a snap. Dwayne Price, uh, uh, a young sophomore from College Station, will replace him. That's next, Coach. The Irish. Going to be a good one. Going to be a good one. I just wouldn't want to coach against uh, Holtz in a bad mood. That's all. I'd rather him feel a little more confident and relaxed and enjoy his week of practice. First 
Stent, 10. Milne and Archie are the running backs. And this is Archie. Daylight left side. Archie to the 40-yard line, a nine-yard burst. See, they pulled both guards on that, and the defender came down to constrict the play and got locked up on the guard, meaning force with force, and Archie just, boun Archie just bounced out to the side of it. Good defense, too, but good running, good reaction. Guard will pull and kick out. He constricts it, and Archie bounces to the outside of the block. D got him right there. Now watch it. Bang! Out to the side. That good movement out there. They should have a contain man coming into space. Well, the Red Raiders have certainly atoned for that embarrassment in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl, haven't they? They have played their hearts out here. Second down, and now Whitman blasts them almost out to midfield. And here's where that offensive line in the fourth quarter is starting to wear down the lighter Red Raiders. Well, you know, last year, Kajana Carter carried the load in these situations. They give the ball to Kajana. Well, they don't have him, so they give the ball to Archie, but they have the two big fullbacks, Whitman and Millen, to give the ball to, and they're doing it right now. Big, strong guys, tough to knock down, especially in the fourth quarter. Jura Vicious and Campbell are to the left side. All summers, the tight end to the right. Both fullbacks in the game. Here's the blitz. To the 49-yard line, and that was Whitman, the ball carrier. See, it's a three-yard gain on first down, Dick. I'm not so sure they're not calling the blitz once they see the offensive formation, because they, they, they lined up in regular coverage look from up here anyway, and then jumped to their blitz real late and came right into it and hit that running play. Maybe there's a tendency not to throw the ball from a slot formation. Now Scott is back and he is out to the right. So they don't show slot and they are going to throw. Richardson comes underneath to Milne. Milne breaks one tackle, but then he can't get any further than that, so he gave maybe half a yard. Dwayne Price Good is defense. there defensively. They wanted to throw the curl pattern outside strong there, but the coverage took it away. There was no one to throw it to. Good job of playing pass defense. So it could be coming down to this man from Georgia, Brett Conway. And of course, time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report. Now third and six. Certainly not close enough yet. They'll need to convert here. They're rushing up inside. They better pick it up. Richardson under pressure. Caught by Ingram. And that at the 34. First down, Nittany Lions. The offensive people up front did a real good job. Running back, Archie included. They brought the two linebackers inside. And Archie picked it up. Bang, he picks it up. That gives him time to sit in the pocket. One-on-one -on -one coverage now to the slot man. And that is a wide receiver isolated on a safety type guy. And that's a mismatch, and he got it to the right guy. You know, Archie was able to run off the linebacker, and that really helped Richardson out on that play, didn't it? On first down, and Whitman again for a couple of yards, short of the 30-yard line, bringing the clock down, 240. The Nittany Lions, they're not worried about being number one right now. They know that that's out of the question. They're concerned about surviving right here. They know Florida State and Nebraska are going to be still up there. They would love to kick a winning field goal and get out of here with no time left. They'd take that right now. Brett, offensively, running your offense as a coach, what you're thinking, who are my best football players? I've got to get the ball in my best football player's hands. Regardless of what kind of play it is, put it in your best player's hands. And in the second half, it's been number 10. And they jam up the fullback that time as the Red Raiders were not fooled. Zach Thomas, the man in the middle, Crowd a touch restless on that call. I'll come down inside of two minutes. 96,000 on hand, and folks, they did not expect this. The Red Raiders from the Southwest Conference, and that conference is last year. What a great conference it has been. They have come up here. The last time Joe Paterno went against the Southwest, I think he lost an opener back in 1990 to the Longhorns of Texas. Now it is third down again. Big play for both squads. Richardson off a of fake. 
trouble. Now throws, got him again. Tremendous. At the 19-yard line, and it's number 10, Mr. Ingram. Tremendous plays that time by Richardson. They rushed him, he ducked under it, slid up inside, and did an awfully good job of throwing the strike. Third down conversions in this drive, just excellent. He's This young man is growing up. Here they are, they, got, they bump him, they're going to the zone, they turn him loose in there. Ingram, number 10, comes around in that zone. They, they had Marcus Coleman, number 12. Here's Ingram working around, they turn him loose in that zone. He sits down nicely in there. Excellent job, though, done by the quarterback. Inside of a minute 20 now with Campbell in motion. Blitz. And the handoff against it. Whitney inside the 15-yard line. One thing to keep in mind as the Nittany Lions bring the clock down. And it's not a small issue. There's only one timeout remaining. They have used two of their three here in the second half. So now the Red Raiders use their timeout. Their first one, they get it. And that might have been their second one, too. It is. It is their second one timeout. Piece. So now there's one timeout apiece. The ball is down at the 15-yard line. Certainly now they are within Conway range. I can't say enough, though, Brent, on this drive of Wally Richardson. He has really started to come on and gain confidence. He's bought the nose of the ball down now. He's thrown it over the top of people. He was rushing when he didn't have to be rushed. The pressure bothered him a little bit. But now he's reacting to the pressure, sliding away from it, staying poised, and throwing the strike. He's doing an awfully good job. This game will make the rest of his season. So Conway, a young man who traveled up here all the way from Georgia, he too, a soccer star. He was all state in both sports. He's a good kicker, Brent. I watched him the other day on the practice field. He has a strong leg. He won't have to kick a long one here, but Joe said he's got a 54-yard field goal leg. He kicked 12, 10 for 12 last year, and from this distance, he was four for four. Now, if you're a Nittany Lion fan, the one thing you don't want, obviously, is a turnover. You must protect the football. If you're a Red Raider fan, that's exactly what you want. Don't get the football. Make something happen right here. Stop it. They're going to blitz him. You know that. This is Archie. Archie to the 11-yard line and into the middle of the field. The one thing the Nittany Lions will attempt to do is give Conway the hash mark where he's the most comfortable here if it comes down to that kick. First down. Now Texas Tech will use its final timeout. 48 seconds to go. And Joe Paterno sitting there with one final timeout and trailing it by two points. That goes all the way back to Joe's decision on that fourth down to go for it rather than the field goal and get the touchdown rather than the three. Fran Ganter standing there over the quarterback's left shoulder. Coach Joe there on the right. Kent Jackson, the wide receiver coach, standing there giving his two best worth. Everyone's got an opinion in this situation. Well, we have a moment. Let's check in with John Saunders. John? All right, Brent, thanks a lot. We want to remind everyone coming up following your game, Notre Dame against Purdue, Ron Paulus sacked four times last week in the loss to Northwestern. Mike Allstadt for Purdue, their big fullback, he was over 100 yards rushing on the day against West Virginia last week. Brent. And John on third and two at the Texas Tech 11. 48 seconds left on the clock. And Penn State... If they don't get the first down, we'll attempt to square it up here for Conway. I tell you, Brent, as a former coach, you never want to leave the game in the hands of a kicker. <laughs> That's the only thing that gives me an empty feeling. I can remember those situations. They're blitzing. Now they've done just that. Milne Donald free. A penalty fly. Hold on. This could be a big one. Did they get a holding call there? If it is, it's on Andre Johnson. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Makes it a lot tougher, boy. You drop about 18% moving it back into that next kicking zone in terms of college kickers moving from that 20 on in or 20 to 30 zone. 
Well, they've got third down, but the one thing you don't want to do here is gamble too much. Do you? you can't take a sack Holding now, too. Offense, that. 10 yards, still third down. I think they call that, I think they call that an Andre Johnson, the offensive left tackle in that play. So it comes back to the 25-yard line, and meanwhile, we can tell you who our genuine Triple A most valuable players of the game are, a couple of fine defenders. Sean Banks of Texas Tech, Terry Killens of Penn State, and so $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Now Archie cuts off a block, and down at the 22 or 23-yard line, and so it is gonna come down. They have put it in the hands of Conway here. And they will probably use their last yes, time they, did. they just called it, Brent. So at the eight second mark, they use their last time out. And the young man, 39 George yard attempt, huh? Well, he was five for seven from this distance last year. But when you drop Perfect. out of that shorter zone, you really drop in percentage chances of making. Let's remember he missed a 37 yarder in the third quarter and a 49 yarder in the second quarter. Definitely not automatic here for Conway and that holding penalty now looms as one of the bigger plays of this football game for both sides. God darn it. You know, I'm up here in the booth and my palms are so I'm nervous for both guys. Hey, listen, you get <laughs> nervous when it's 53 to 3. <laughs> now, can you just imagine being a coach on either side right now? The exhilaration if it goes your way and the axe, I mean the death-defying, gut-wrenching feeling when you lose the darn thing. Joe Nastasi Never will put it down. He'll be the holder for Conway. It's going to be from that right hash mark, kicker's right hash mark. 39-yarder, and everybody's up in Happy Valley. Will it still be happy in a few seconds? You've got a great view at home. Here it is. Conway has given the lead. Back to Penn State. And baby, it was close. You watch this football go over that right upright. It there, the ball coming. Here's the upright. Bring it a little further. Can't see the ball. There it is, right there. Just inside. Wow. Almost didn't make the goal post high enough. I tell you, Coach Dykes has got to be extremely proud of his football team. He took a great football team of a year ago. They're still going to be a good team this year, right down to a kicker. Now, wait a minute. The difference. This game should be tied. Right. Extra Texas point. Tech. Yeah, extra, this is an extra, extra point. point. I said in the first half, that could come back to yeah. haunt you time after time, time after, after time. time. No question. It's amazing how that stuff. That's why if, if coaches got to vote on it, they'd eliminate PATs and field goal kickers. <laughs> hey, listen, if they'd golfers eliminate. got to vote, they'd eliminate putty. <laughs> but you know what? It's part of the game, so I let's know. go. But I'll tell you, having experienced that kind of loss, you just cannot believe the feeling you have as a coach. I mean, it absolutely kills you. Well, I think everybody down in Lubbock should be on their feet and give these Red Raiders a standing ovation. Need them at the airport. Welcome home and get out there. This is a team that came in here, outweighed tremendously in the matchups down in the lines. They hit and they hustled all day long, and they made themselves proud. They, they made the conference proud down there, too. They did a heck of a job up here. No question. And who knows? They may have cost Penn State a national championship. It's going to be tough for these guys to climb up to one or two now. You bet it will be. Well, I tell you, I hope there's a large crowd to meet these kids in Texas when they land at the you airport. Know, you know what people are saying right now? Yeah. You and Vermeil, shut up. What we want is a 98-yard return for a touchdown. <laughs> we don't want a big They won't kick it to them. <laughs> they won't kick it to them. <laughs> Oh, they'll Lord. bounce it along there. No timeouts, four seconds left. Of course, we had a game a few weeks ago, didn't we? Last yes, game. indeed. We're down to the last play. On the ground it goes. Let's have the lateral play. 
well, there's a couple of seconds when he took the knee. I guess they're going to have old Zebby. They'll get to the snap it. Sure. They'll try the Geronimo play. How deep will the Penn State safety be? I see one youngster back here at the 25-yard line. Brian King, you know, I believe they have set up a defense just for this. I mean, he trotted right off the bench and went back inside the 20-yard line. Well, you rehearse these situations. This Jerry Sandusky defensive staff, they've been through this. They've been through it. They know what you're supposed to do. Last snap of what has been a heck of a college football game. Complete. And down at the 45. And Texas Tech goes out badly. They lose it, but they did not back away. A three-touchdown underdog, and Joe Paterno is over here to say, hey, that's a heck of a football game. I am just lucky to get out of here alive. The Nittany Lions win their opener, but only by a point as the Red Raiders miss an extra point, and Conway hits the big field goal. Don't forget next, Notre Dame and Purdue.